Hello, good day, welcome back to Go on the Run. And today we're gonna to start with JWT. So we're gonna jump right in and start off with some illustration. So let's get started. So the agenda for today is we're going to look at the problem that uh, we're trying to solve, why we have JWT, possible desired solution, and what JWT is. So what is the problem? Well, let's say you're building out an application. So you have users who need to connect to some service, let's call it S1. Now, because we're in a microservice world, S1 might connect to S2 and why not S3 also? Now, each service needs to validate that user. Otherwise, we might have users with um, getting, being able to do things that don't have the right role, which means now that each service must have the ability to perform, let's say, a, a minimum authorization check and maybe even duplicating authentication just in case, for whatever reason, the user is not expiration at lock um, at expire by the time it reaches that service, which means each service now must have access to the shared information about users, and which means each service now needs to have access to that data. So now we can see that in a world like this, if each service had to do its own security, they all contact in the shared information and it's just cumbersome. Not to mention, if we had to deal with things like a service being able to remember the user, because let's say we have session, then we have to remember the user across the time they start interacting with us because we don't want to look them up every single time they come to that service. Now the service has to remember this um, user across a session. So there are a number of problems with this in terms of how this would scale out. And of course, the attack surface or the number of places that things can go wrong is just wider because all the services are sort of doing somewhat some of the same thing when it comes to security. So we would like a better solution. The solution we would like is to get rid of some of these problems. So you want to decouple security concerns from each application. You really want to put that in one place. It's the equivalent of how you have a driver license or a state ID where the government takes on the responsibility of issuing and verifying you, um, give, giving you ID. But then with that ID now, when you go other places, you just show it to them and they can certainly look at it and verify. But guess what? On that ID is your expiration date of that ID, your picture and stuff. So you really don't need to go back to the issuing agency to um, verify you. Your ID tells them if it's valid or not. And essentially that's what we're going to do. And that reduces the load um, for doing verification or authent um, you know, for authentication and authorization. Because right there on the ID, it says who you are, how long your ID has been valid, and what you're allowed to do. If you're allowed to drive or get on the military base or get into the library or whatever, your ID says that, right? So, and the other thing is essentially we want statelessness because if we each service doesn't have to remember or think about session, then um, it's less memory that service can use because each time a user presents themselves to do something, they would have this ID that they can then present to the service that the service can quickly check because it's not a lot of work. And so it doesn't really need to remember, them, remember that user between invocation. And this allows it to scale and be able to allow, handle a lot more users and um, not be as resource intensive. So what does our solution look like now in this new world? Well, we still have our application that we wanted to communicate with each other before, so S1, S2, and S3. However, we'll now factor out security into its own domain. You can think of it either as an application or a set of application. But everything we have to do with security, we sort of pull it all together with its data so that it is in control of the data. And nobody else doesn't need to. Nobody else outside of the security domain need to you access it. Our users now will just then be able to contact um, that service that's providing security, and they would then be able to be given their identifier or that token that we talk about. Now, the first thing they must do before they use any one of our service is contact the security service 
Once they have their token, then they can go talk to service one and service one can then pass on that same token to service two and service three, who will then also use it for verification. But remember, this is a token. It's equivalent to how you have your ID, right? It has all the information in that token about who you are and what you are allowed to do and how long is this token valid for. So what does this token look like? Well, this token is the JWT, the Java Web Token. And so here's a sample Java Web Token. And it doesn't look really interesting, right? It's just a piece of data. You could think of it as a string if you like, right? And it's lightweight. And when I say lightweight in the sense that this is not that big that you couldn't put it in the error of a request between services, right? And because it has all the information that a service would need to be able to deny or allow access to that service, um, Therefore, we don't have to worry about each service needing to go back to like the original um, security service or having access to the database because this token has all that information. Now, as it's shown here, it's a little bit hard to read. And what you might not notice is that there are three parts to it delimited by a period. And so that first part in red is called a header. And we'll get into that in the next video. And the middle part is the payload or data about this user and what they have access to. And the last part is the signature. This basically allows to validate the previous two. And so hopefully you can see that with a solution like this, it really does allow us to scale. And again, we don't know what's actually inside or what does this information mean or how to read it yet. But trust me, um, it's not as difficult as you might think or it might appear on the surface. I promise you it's very simple and you will see how we can decipher this information in the next video. If you're not a subscriber and you've reached this far in the video, please consider being a subscriber. If you're a returning subscriber, thank you for sticking with me and for coming back. Really appreciate it. Can't thank you enough. And finally, before I go, in terms of supporting the channel, there are a number of ways in which you can support the channel. A new addition is that I have a Tesla referral link and using the Tesla referral link, if you're in the market for anything Tesla related, either EV or, you know, solar panel or anything from Tesla, um, you can use my referral link and we both benefit by both of us getting some points. All right. Take care. Be safe. Have a great day. Bye.